Hello, my name is Alden Wokte, and in this video, we'll be looking on how to fight properly as the modded Pachyrhinosaurus. At the time of the upload of this video, this creature is still brand right new, so expect a few potential changes in the future. In this video, we'll go over the following topics. Without further ado, let's start with Arsenal. In the first empty slot, we got ready to fight. This increases acceleration and speed on yourself and onto the group. Unfortunately, it only works when you're in group. By the way, this video will focus on solo play. The second ability, Winter's Barricade, increases armor and if you're a Ceratopsian, then there's a bonus for ya. Also only works if you are in a group. For head abilities, we got three options. The first one is Lesser Regenerative Bite. A normal bite that restores 2% of your max HP. Actually quite an important ability, more on that later. The second ability is Frostbitten Smash. That has nothing to do with the cold. It deals fixed tide damage with 35% of the damage being recoil. On impact, the enemy's cooldown and its ability are increased by 20%, meaning that their chances for retaliations are reduced. The third ability, Meteor Crusher. Such a grand name for a rather underwhelming attack. Not saying that it is bad, but it's not suitable for a 1v1 situation. Not difficult to dodge, and with a 40% of the damage as recall, you do almost as much damage to yourself as you do to your enemies. For sensibilities, the first one is Lone Wanderer. When you're not in group, you gain the following buffs. Having no friends comes with benefits. The second ability, Reckless. Might as well change the name to Suicidal. With the increase of 10% in recoil, you can do 50% recoil with Meteor Crusher and 45% with Frostbitten Smash. Depending on the creature you're fighting, you're actually doing more damage to yourself than to them, and that's not factoring the damage they are doing to you. The third ability, Imperial March. Mostly disappointing, it doesn't play the Imperial March when used, and it only works when in group. For front limb abilities, we have two options. The first is Armored Parry. Deflects 90% damage of the attack and puts the sentence Parry this you filthy casual into my brain. The second ability, Balance, increases your turning speed and turning circle. For height, we have three options. The first are King's Shield, which does the normal King stuff, increases armor slash lots of promises during peacetime, but when shit gets real, does absolutely nothing. The second ability, Deepen Slumber, increases all of your recoveries when you're resting or sleeping. The third ability, just Tough Scouts, increases armor. That's it. For leg abilities, we have three options. The first is Knight's March. It reduces the group's stamina drain when running, and apparently works for also when solo. Gotta fact check that. Second ability is Migration Lead. Only does good stuff when you are out of combat. Third ability, Deus Strike Ex Maki, ah, I mean a Deus Bolt, increases bone break heal and grants knockback immunity, if they are Ceratopsian of course. Nepotism at its finest. For backlim abilities, we have two options. The first is Bullfighter Takedown. It is both an AoE attack with a back kick, which is nice considering we don't have any other attacks facing backwards. The second ability is Raffle Charge. I'll give you 10 seconds to figure out what that does. In addition, it deals quite a nice knockback. For voice abilities, we have two options. The first is Bull Cop. It increases your attack and turn radius at the cost of armor. The second is Intimidating Frill, which reduces your enemy's offensive stats, though rather than being intimidated, then my enemy always chooses to ignore that. The arsenal I recommend is as following. At first you may have noticed that some slots are left open. This is due to the fact that both or all of the abilities can be useful. It depends on the situation and what type of enemies you are facing. I'll talk more about which one is better suited for a certain situation in a little, but first we'll gloss over the abilities that are only usable for when you're in group, they won't be activated anyways. As for head abilities, having the attack that doesn't kill you, but rather heals you, it's stupid not to have it equipped. It works even when you are in combat, and considering the base stats of the creature, it does pack quite the punch. As for Frostbitten Smash, I chose it over the other due to it being faster, more difficult to dodge, and have less recoil. As for why having bulk up as a call of intimidating frill, you'll see the importance of having a good turn radius in a little bit. We have 6 different subspecies, 2 of each will represent the stat difference. We got buff abnormal FX healing, buff in armor, and buff in attack. I personally recommend the buff in armor, but the buff in attack aren't too bad as well, it depends on what enemies you are fighting. 
and as for abnormal conditions, there is nothing that can't be powered through. Your fighting style also factor in in this, you'll see why in a second, but first, let's talk about terrain compatibility. To be honest, any open area works well enough, the pack your rhino is a bit on the chubby side, so having a lot of hindrances might not work in your favor. It's good to have a wall, cliff or water close by in case of faster opponents, but you should aim for an open area. Having heals will also help, you might not be the fastest creature, but many of your abilities boost your acceleration, something that might surprise faster opponents during downhill. As for fighting style, the Paco Rhino are pretty much comparable to the Alberta Ceratops, with the exception of less independency, but the fighting style are pretty similar. It's a brawler and can do hit and run, it depends on the opponent, again. In the case with low tiers, running around and chasing them is a waste of stamina and time. Bait them in, and try to hit them when you can. This is why having better turn radius on front limb will be better in a situation like this. Taking a defensive stand and waiting for them to run into your attack is the best way to do it. But don't just flail around, you too have cooldown, and they can attack you during that period. Having the AoE ability is also better in this situation, as a charge attack may be pointless against such a fast opponent. But when fighting a low tier, in the majority of those fights, you will most likely have the advantage in terms of HP. To keep themselves in the fight, they will have to back off and let themselves heal, which means that you also will have the opportunity to heal considering you're not in combat. This is why having the better recovery hide might be better than any of the other hides. You are tougher than them, so you can tag a few hits from a low tier. Of course the situation will change if there are more than one opponent. Protocol then is just to have them run into your attack again. Now remember what I said about downhill and acceleration? You may catch some creatures who are usually faster than you by surprise. In the case of fighting mid tiers, I'd say it really comes down to player skill. You see, there are times when mid tiers might just absolutely cook you. There are also time where the Paco Rhino will absolutely cook the mid tier. In terms of stat, you are somewhat equal. Pay attention to how this turned into a battle of turn radius. This is why having a better turn radius, or having abilities that makes your turn radius better, would be better than rather than prioritizing on raw damage alone. This is a fight between mid tiers, and I'd say the chances of winning are 50 50. Now go up against an Apex, and I'd say the chances are less than ideal. Of course, you can try a more unorthodox strategy. But that only works as long as the server doesn't have any rules that breaks the laws of physics. But once again, this is a fight between mid tiers, it all boils down to the player's skills. The battle will most likely turn into a battle of radius, either that or just a head on head to brawl. Of course, due to damage from recoil and the damage you will receive from your enemy, the best strategy is to turn the battle into a battle of turn radius. When it comes to fighting Apexes, this is something I would recommend you not to do if you're not experienced. You are a mid tier versus an Apex. 
The difference is stats are pretty big, believe it or not. Against safe access, you have no choice but to do hit and run. And if you can't do that properly, then your the damage you receive will be less than ideal. Also, when you are facing against safe access, there are high chance that they will have a stomp ability. It is then good to have the deflect ability. Or you can just dodge. Again, you cannot take on an Apex in a head-to-head -head clash. You will have to do hit and run, or try to turn the battle into a battle of turn radius. And even then you have to watch out for any potential stomp. If both of your healths are starting to get low, it is good to drag out the battle. After all, you will recover faster than the Apex can. Fighting an Apex as a Pakyo Rhino is difficult, but not impossible. So take it as a challenge. If you have the experience and the skills, then knock yourself out. Just keep in mind that when you start a battle, everything is stacked against you, except for in speed. Now the absolute best strategy is just to team up with someone bigger and stronger than you, and then you can just take the role as support. Of course that kind of defeats the purpose of building up your own personal skill, but you know what, you do you. Some of you have most likely noticed that I don't do these combat guys as often anymore. For that, I just started to feel like they were becoming too repetitive. Of course, I'm not saying that I'm gonna stop making them at all. I'm just going to not make them as often. Only mostly when there are new creatures introduced or if an already existing creature receives game-changing updates. What I want to focus on are the larger project, as some of you might have seen with some of the longer videos like the Minecraft videos or the Path of Titans challenge videos. I am planning other bigger projects aside from those, but the combat analyzing videos won't be the main focus on this channel. I hope that all of you can accept that and will continue to enjoy whatever there is that I am creating. With that, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!